Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. Thank you for tuning in to my channel today. Today I want to do two things. First of all, I want to show you my latest capture of the Wizard Nebula. Now I've been working on this project now for about a month. And I've only, in that period, only had two nights where I could actually go out and do any imaging. Here in Southern Illinois, we have been, uh, it's been overcast most of the summer. And on a few of the nights where we've actually had clear conditions, we've had smoke that's come out from out west and it's kind of, you know, jammed everything up. So in, in, on an, uh, in a month, I've only gotten two nights where I've gotten to image. But I've got some pretty good data here on the Wizard Nebula. So what I want to do is I want to show you that image. I want to tell you a little bit about this object. And then I want to talk to you a little bit, kind of in the way of follow-up, about star reduction. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video and I shared with you the new star reduction tool in Astro Pixel Processor. Now, I'm glad that that tool is there and I'm looking forward to it getting developed, but I have to tell you that with this particular image, the star reducer in APP, APP did not work very well for me. Instead, I went over and used StarNet++. And so I'm gonna show you very quickly how I did that. Now, this is not a complete tutorial on how to use StarNet++ or how to uh, do um, uh, that type of um, uh, processing, but I just wanna show you very quickly how I did it and then the results, and maybe it will encourage you to take a look and learn a little bit more about it. Stick around, I'll be right back. Okay, very quickly, I want to take just a moment and show you where the Wizard Nebula is in the night sky. You can see here, this is the constellation, I'm looking towards the northeast, this is the constellation Cepheus right here, and the Wizard uh, Nebula is located right here. It's in pretty close proximity to another of uh, uh, a, a number of other popular nebulas for astrophotography. Up here you can see this is the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. Just below it um, here uh, is the Bubble Nebula right here, the Cave Nebula. Um, and this is just an area that's very, uh, of the night sky that's very rich in nebulosity. Okay, now if I zoom in here a little bit, you'll see that the Wizard Nebula is um, it's it's often uh, designated as NGC 7380, but that's actually a reference to this cluster of stars that are located here uh, inside. This is actually a reference to the cluster, not to the nebulosity. Uh, the nebulosity is more um, uh, accurately cataloged as H SH2-142. But uh, nevertheless, this is a uh, an emission nebula. Kind of rich in hydrogen alpha. It is uh, located 7,200 light years from Earth, and it's about 100 light years in radius. It was discovered in 1787 by Caroline Herschel, and um, of course, this is an area where new stars are being formed. In fact, the stars that make up this cluster are quite young. Now, let's go over. Let me go ahead and reduce this, and I'm going to drag over this is the image that I produced coming right out of Astro Pixel Processor. This is a combination of 108 five-minute subs, so nine hours of data collected total. I used 50 darks, and then for each session, I shot this over a course of two nights. So each night, I shot 40 flats and 40 dark flats. So all told, this would be 108 um, uh, light frames, 50 dark frames, 80 flats, and 80 dark flats. I put them all together in Astro Pixel Processor, and this is what I got out. And overall, I'm really happy with this picture. Now, I've cropped it down a little bit and done just a little bit of work of kind of reducing some of the gradient that was in it in Astro Pixel Processor. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this picture. 
And, um, and, and maybe if you were doing this image, you'd want to just stop right here. A lot of you will say, man, I'm happy with that. This kind of shows it um, in pretty good um, uh, format. But one of the things I notice here is that the stars sort of overwhelm the picture a little bit. They distract away from the nebulosity. And what I wanted to do was reduce that down. And so what I did was I played around in uh, Photoshop and with a number of other tools. And this is the final picture that I came up with. And uh, this is with some star reduction and doing a little bit to enhance the nebulosity a little bit. Now, I like this picture a lot better. So let's just put it on two sides of the frame. I like the right-hand picture a lot better than the left-hand picture. Now, you may differ on that. You may say, no, I like it with the, the, the more bolder stars. But what I want to do is talk about how I got to this just for a moment. Um, two weeks ago, I did a video on the new star reduction tool in Astro Pixel Processor. And I'm excited that they've put that tool in there, and I'm looking forward to, for the further development. But I have to honestly say that when I tried to use it on this data, it did not work very well. So I tried a number of other techniques. I went over into Photoshop. I used a couple of other star reduction techniques, and I really didn't find what I was looking for. But I found a new tool. Now, this is a new tool to me, but probably not to many of you. It is called StarNet++. Now, this is a program that you've got to go over to um, SourceForge. This is where I downloaded it from. And it is a Python um, uh, program. And what you do when once you've downloaded it is it's going to create a um, folder on your computer. I've got it here in my computer as StarNet. Plus, well, if I could find it here, just um, oh, um, yeah, StarNet uh, underscore Win. Okay, and what I've done is I've drug over the um, um, th this NG seventy three eighty. This is the um, uh, th that is that file that came right out of Astro Pixel Processor. That's this picture right here, NGC seventy three eighty, and that's got stars in it. And what I did was to, and this is a super easy program to use. You'll notice here that I've got two versions of the application. I've got RGB StarNet++ or Mono StarNet++. Now, because I'm shooting with a Keller CMOS camera, this is the one I want to use. Now, if you look up videos on this on YouTube, a lot of guys are going to show you how to do this from the command prompt. You have to go down and open the command prompt, um, type in, uh, a whole bunch of commands and make it work. You don't have to do that. All you've got to do is take this and drag and drop this picture over top of the RGB StarNet++. When you do, it is going to open up a little um, box and it is going to show you the progress. It's going to take you about 10 or 15 minutes to produce a new picture. When it comes out, you will have a starless picture. This is what my starless picture looks like. Okay. Now, I have renamed that as NGC 7380 starless. And what I've done is opened two different images here in Photoshop. And let me show you how I did that real quick. Let me just close this, okay, and just show you. Because it's really not hard, but maybe this will confuse you if you haven't done it. So what I want to do is I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to just simply drag and drop. This is my TIFF file coming out of uh, APP. That's my NGC 7380 with stars. Now what I'm going to do is go over to File, and I'm going to open up the starless picture, NGC 7380 starless. Now I've got two pictures. What I want to do is, is I want to do some adjustments on the nebulosity and just a little bit of cleaning up. You'll notice that uh, StarNet++ left over some artifacts here, and I want to spend some time removing those. Now, I'm going to do this very quick and very dirty for the purposes of this, uh, this YouTube video. What you really need to do is take your time, do this very carefully, 
and then I probably took in the on my actual processing of this image, I probably took the better part of an hour just working on getting this to where I wanted it. Now, first thing I want to do is show you how to get rid of these artifacts. You want to go over here to your clone stamp tool, click on it, then come over and you're going to need to set your brush size to whatever size you want to work with. I'm going to make it 80 for my purposes here. You might want to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. I find a little bit bigger works better for me, but not too big. 80 worked perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here very close to this star halo, but not in the star halo. So I'm going to come right here. I'm going to hold down Alt and then left click my mouse. Now I'm going to, and what that does is it takes a sample. It takes a, makes an, uh, of that area. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to place it where I want. And I'm going to click my left mouse button. And look what it did. It sort of removed that halo. I can do it again. Now, what I like to do is keep sampling. So I'm going to go Alt click, Alt left click, and then I'm going to left click. And I'm going to remove a little bit. I'm going to just kind of chip away at it. And I like to keep taking samples. See here I'm sampling. Alt, left click. Now I'm going to apply that. And I'm just going to apply that around and get this artifact removed. Okay? Now this takes a while. And you've got to go through each one of these areas that you want to get rid of. So let me just do this one. Alt. Alt click, then I go left click, left click, Alt left click, so I can sample it again. Alt left click, left click, left click, Alt left click. And you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of removing that. Now, again, on your real picture and your real process, you want to take a lot of time and really do this carefully. Now, the other thing I can do is I can come over here and I can go to adjustments. And I can adjust the curves. And what's nice about this, I can adjust this just on this layer without blowing out my stars. Okay, so I can go over here, set a couple of points. Now, oh, that was no good. <laughs> let, me, let me try that again. All right, let me go to curves. And I can come over here. I can adjust this. And look what that is. That's brightening up my nebulosity. And again, you probably know how to do this because of Photoshop. You can go and play around with this just for the sam just for the purposes of this image. I'm just going to leave it right there just for time's sake. I could do a lot of other things. I could come over here. I could run any of these plugins and actions that I have, so, you know, for astronomy tools. Um, so if I wanted to run, you know, let's say I wanted to come down here and run, you know, a local contrast enhancement, I could click and, and, and run that. You see what I mean? I'm going to do a lot of processing right here just to get this underlying nebulosity to come out. Now, when I want to add my stars back in, what I want to do is come back over to this picture. I want to go Control A to select all. Then I'm going to con go Control C to copy that. Then I want to click back over here on my starless. I'm going to go back to my starless version, come down, click on plus to add a layer. I want to click on that layer, then press Control V. And what I've done now is I've copied that. You say, well, wait a minute. That looks exactly like what you did in APP. Exactly. But notice what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go to the opacity level, and I'm going to cut that opacity level back up, down. And what that's doing, it's allowing this layer underneath to show up more, and it's cutting back um, this top layer. So what happens is this is kind of reducing the brightness of my stars while at the same time letting a little bit of that increase in the nebulosity to come up. Now, you don't want to go too far with this. I find that if I just drop it down just a tad, it really enhances the picture. And that's how I went from this over to, let me find it, uh, <laughs> um, to this. All right, so let's look at both of those. This is the original version coming out of APP. This is my final version. Now, if you like having a lot of stars and, and, and you want it to look more natural, then by all means, you could have just stayed with this particular picture. But 
For my purposes, I kind of like this one a little bit better. And so that's the one that I stayed with. And uh, But I wanted to show you how I did that. I hope it helped. I hope you learned something. Um, again, try every tool you can find. Um, try different techniques. And uh, I'm not telling you this is the only way to do it. This is just the way that I did it. If it helps you, great. If it doesn't, find another one. But um, uh, that's how I did this one. I'm really proud of this picture. I really think it came out really nice. I like the detail here in the nebulosity. You can see some of this, these clouds that are sticking up, these areas here where new stars are being formed. Just think about that. In all of these little points and little spots, new stars are being formed out of the dust that's out there in um, the galaxy. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you click on subscribe and so you'll get notices and um, uh, when I put up new pictures and I'll put something up next week. I hope that we get some good weather. Thanks for tuning in.